afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Indianapolis for the 2023 NCAA Selection Show for Division II Women's Soccer. I'm Brendan Gulick. It is a privilege to be with you today as we set the stage for our national tournament. This has been such a fun season, particularly because it feels like there's a little shakeup going on at the top of the national rankings. Sure, there are still some teams that are, are highly ranked. They've been good for a little while. But there are some new faces unfolding that have told a great story throughout the sport and are trying to prove that they can break through to win a national championship. Western Washington is our defending champion. They've made a deep run several times before in this tournament, but they lost in the conference tournament this past weekend and will be hoping for one of the at-large bids into the field. This year's champion will be crowned in Greater Charlotte, North Carolina at the Sportsplex at Matthews. The semifinals and championship are scheduled for December 7th and 9th. Those games will be streamed live for you right here on NCAA.com. Once again, those games are being held in conjunction, by the way, with the D2 Men's Championship. There's six great games lined up for fans all weekend long. We'll keep you updated with all the latest tournament news and information, too, again, here on NCAA.com. So much of who makes it to North Carolina is dependent upon the matchups along the way, so let's figure out who's playing where and when to start things off this weekend. We kick things off in the top left-hand corner of the bracket. This is the Atlantic region. An opening round by for Charleston, who won the Mountain East auto bid, thanks to the Golden Eagles' first women's soccer championship in program history. MEC Freshman of the Year Juliet Lucas put Charleston on the board in the 51st minute, using an assist from Lena Jaime, the league's 2023 Offensive Player of the Year. It's a good defensive effort from the Golden Eagles because Frostburg State held a 23-8 shots advantage. But number five nationally ranked Charleston got it done. They have a chance to start fresh with a first round bye. Gannon returns with an at-large bid from the PSAC after finishing second in the West Division. How much fun has it been to watch Brooklyn Respecki this year? She was not only the PSAC West Freshman of the Year, she led the league with 35 points and 13 assists during the regular season. She also tied the conference lead with 11 goals with her teammate, Grace Emanuel, who's had a sterling year. The Knights got a big win in the league tournament over Kutztown, so they feel like they can beat anybody in the regional. Mercyhurst back in the tournament after a one-year hiatus. The Lakers were on some roll earlier this year, at one point winning 12 straight games with 11 of those coming as shutouts. Mercyhurst lost to Westchester in the PSAC semis, but it did not cost them a shot to keep playing. Lakers beat Gannon twice during the regular season, but at this point, the third matchup is all that matters. It took 20 games before Kutztown was finally defeated, but the untimely loss just meant a little more drama for the Bears today. They didn't score many goals, but Kutztown's defense is just brutal to play against. And they're gonna open competition up in this NCAA tournament against the Concord Mountain Lions out of the Mountain East. Kutztown got an 80th minute goal from Lexi Andres back in September when they slid past Concord 2-1. The defending national runner-up had no issue punching its ticket back to the tournament. Westchester back-to-back -back PSAC championships. They began in 2-1 at Kutztown last week. Victoria Pungelo scored in the 82nd minute to break the 1-1 tie, and it gave the Golden Rams their sixth Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference championship in program history. Well, the Rams haven't had a high-octane offense this year, but they've been plenty tough enough against some other really good teams. They've proved they are certainly uh, capable of winning this time of year. They open up with Frostburg State, the Bobcats, who are clearly worthy of a bid this season. Frostburg played two great games against Charleston that ultimately ended in losses. They're looking for better results this year after dropping the tournament opener last fall. To the East region now. There were a number of upsets this past weekend, but the number one team in the nation took care of business without issue. The College of St. Rose defeated Adelphi 4-1 in the Northeast 10 final. It's a fourth consecutive league championship and the 11th title in program history. St. Rose is absolutely loaded, checking in as one of the preeminent offensive powers in the country. Mia Klammer leads the way with 18 goals. That's fourth nationally. Now, this team's drawn only once this year, a 2-2 affair with Southern New Hampshire in mid-October. Otherwise, a perfect 19 wins on their campaign. St. Rose was the national runner-up two years ago. They certainly had their eyes on bringing home a title to Albany, New York. They'll play the winner of 
Roberts Wesleyan and Southern New Hampshire. The Red Hawks had a solid season in the ECC and have surrendered only seven goals all season. Southern New Hampshire's big, biggest bullet point on the resume, frankly, is that they gave St. Rose a challenging game. St. Rose at the time was ranked number three, obviously now number one. Frankly, they almost had them beat, tying up, uh, or I should say giving up a tying goal in the 89th minute. Penmen are led by Carly Schofield, who has nine goals and 20 points this year. Adelphi back in the tournament to represent the NE10. They got on a good roll early in the season, kind of lost their mojo a little bit in October, but they've got a chance to make a big splash moving forward. They'll start with Bridgeport, who was crowned the Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference Tournament champs. That happened on Sunday afternoon when they beat Holy Family 3-1 in the final. The win improves UB's season record to 10-7-3. They get the NCAA East Regional chance now. Maybe they can stir a little magic to recreate that 2018 National Championship run they had in Pittsburgh. Good afternoon to Thomas Jefferson University. Turned things around nicely after going winless in their first three games. Well, let's not ignore how challenging the non-conference schedule was, though, under second-year head coach Kyle Schumann. Once the Rams got hot, only Malloy tripped them up the rest of the year until they fell in PKs to Holy Family in the conference tournament. That should make this first-round matchup that much more interesting because, for the third time in four seasons, Malloy reigns supreme as East Coast Conference champions. They knocked off Damon 2-0 in the championship game. Freshman goalkeeper Elise Munoz named the tournament MOP after collecting three consecutive shutouts and eight saves in the tournament. A couple cool notes on Malloy here. Graduate student Lauren Marinello started the season as an assistant coach before rejoining the roster as a student athlete. She's pursuing a master's in nursing education and didn't learn until much later in the process that she had eligibility remaining. She went 783 days between her final game in 2019 and when she came back to the field in 2023. Marinello's had an assist in that first game. She's fourth on the team in scoring with four goals and four assists this season. Also, senior captain Sarah Tepeto, school record in career assists, as well as the NCAA statistical champion for assists in a game. Moving on to the Central Regional, where Washburn is the top seed, even with earning an at-large bid. A little bit frustrating for the Ichabods after losing to Emporia State twice in the last three games. But they were certainly one of the best teams in the nation this year. They'll host Washita Baptist, the Tigers, who made up for their only two losses of the year with a 2-0 win over Oklahoma Baptist on Sunday, earning the Great American Conference Championship. Third GAC title for Washita, who won it in the spring of 2021 most recently. A nervous wait ends for Minnesota State Mankato. Didn't feel great after falling to Concordia last week. But the Mavericks are anchored by Mackenzie Rath, who is undoubtedly one of the two or three best goalkeepers in the nation. Big exhale in central Missouri. The Jennies are in out of the MIAA. They let up a late goal in the 88th minute of the conference championship match. That ultimately denied him a title. But the number 15 ranked team in the country still good enough to warrant a selection. Defensively, top 15 in the nation in goals against average. They've taken the ninth most corner kicks in the country. Minnesota State, by the way, beat the Jennies 1-0 back in September. So hopefully this rematch will be a really good game. Emporia State captured its second MIAA tournament title in the last three seasons. They beat Central Missouri 3-2. Hornets and Jennings met in the MIAA championship for the third straight season, by the way. Emporia State upset Central Missouri to claim the Hornets' second tournament title in program history. MIAA Player of the Year, Mackenzie DeMarco, owns the league record now for career goals with 80. She also has the record for career points with 171, one of three players nationally leading the country with 19 goals this season. Breathe easy, Fort Hayes State, you're in. The Tigers get an at-large bid out of the MIAA as well. It's their fourth NCAA appearance. First time the program's made it back in back-to-back -back seasons. FHSU 12 shutouts this year. It's tied for the school record they set last fall. Pretty impressive considering how good the MIAA seemed to be here this season. Those two teams, by the way, played to a 1-1 draw back in mid-September. The three seed, hello, St. Cloud State, an at-large berth out of the NSIC. They dropped their semifinal match to Bemidji. The program record 14 wins this year, enough to push them on in the postseason. 
We'll see if they can extract some revenge in a few days because after earning the program's first ever NSIC championship last year, the Bemidji State Beavers captured their second consecutive tournament championship Sunday afternoon by shutting out the University of Mary two to nothing. Bottom left corner of the bracket is the Midwest region where the top seed is one of the top ranked teams in the country. Ashland undefeated this year, but the Eagles lost in penalties to Northwood. Now they were ranked number two nationally going into the conference tournament this week for good reason. You basically can't score on them like ever. 17 shutouts in 21 games. They've outscored teams 50 to four and only one of those goals has come over the last 11 contests. Merrick Mihalik named the great Midwest Defensive Player of the Year. Three straight years now an Eagle has won that award. Their national championship aspirations begin when they host Michigan Tech. The Huskies get an at-large out of the GLIAC. All right, let's elaborate a little bit more here on that major upset in the great Midwest Athletic Conference. Northwood, the Timberwolves upset Ashland in PKs. It captured their first great Midwest title and snapped Ashland's two-year win streak. Congratulations to first-year head coach Michael Corhonen and the Timberwolves on a terrific game plan. They'll open the regionals against Cedarville, who gets an at-large bid from the GMAC, earning its third straight and fourth overall NCAA appearance. Junior midfielder Megan McClish voted the GMAC Offensive Player of the Year. Lady Jackets 15-4-1, with two of those losses coming to Ashland. Northern Michigan, the 2023 GLIAC champion. First time they've ever accomplished that feat. This was the third time in four years that the Wildcats have made it to the GLIAC Finals, but this is the first time they've ever won the tournament. Brenna Mooser scored the only goal in the 22nd minute. That helped beat Wisconsin Parkside one to nothing. Maryville back with an at-large this year. They've been really solid offensively this season. They get to start the NCAA tournament against the same program they beat in the opening round last year. Grand Valley State back in with an at-large bid from the GLIAC. Now, for a long, long time, this program has been the most consistently dominant in the country. So it's a little weird to see them unranked these days, but the Lakers still have exceptionally high expectations. They've had a great season. Grand Valley lost to Parkside in the conference semis. But they've got depth and talent all over the field. They have the experience that so many other programs wish they could lean on. Grand Valley's got the McKendry Bearcats to open things up. Queens of the Great Lakes Valley Conference winning their fourth trophy in league play. McKendry secured its first conference title since the 2021 season. That was back in the spring when they defeated Southern Indiana that year. Bearcats have won all four of their league crowns, by the way, in the past eight seasons. This is their seventh straight postseason berth. Okay, four regions down, four to go. So just hang tight for a second. Be right back with the South, Southeast, South Central, and the West Region qualifiers in just a moment. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of bringing out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. Welcome back to our selection show coverage here on NCAA.com. I've already put in the whole left half of the bracket, which is 30 teams. It's not perfectly split half and half. There are 26 teams still to unveil for you. So we move along to the top right-hand side of the bracket where we're gonna go to the South region. The top seed in the South region earns a bye, and that belongs to Embry-Riddle out of the Sunshine State Conference. Champions this year, making it four straight now for the Eagles. They beat top-seeded Florida Tech on the Panthers' home field this weekend. Sunday also marked the third time in three seasons that the Eagles and Panthers met in that title game. The Eagles lost only once in 18 games, a 1-0 defeat from Florida Southern last month. Otherwise, they routinely won close games. They're going to be a tough out in this national tournament. How's life in Pensacola right now? West Florida gets a well-deserved bid this year. Argos took one on the chin from West Alabama. That left a sour taste in their mouths because they were otherwise terrific as they cruised through the Gulf South Conference. Tip of the cap to Joe Bartolinski. 
who hit the 350 win mark earlier this year. 17th time all time and third consecutive trip to the NCAA tournament for West Florida. Nova Southeastern season lives on. The Sharks moving on. They have outscored their opponents this year 35 to 16 under first year head coach Amy Vaughn. Nova was destroying teams for a good chunk of the season, but they've had their backs against the wall a little bit in mid-October. Lost three games in eight days. They will open up the tournament against the Argonauts. Auto bid from the Gulf South this year belongs to Lee University. The Flames won their third conference championship. Flames are ranked number three in the country this season, and they look like it this past weekend. Goalkeeper and tournament MOP Kate Dirksey led Lee from the uh, back end, helped them record their 12th clean sheet of the season, also earned an opening round by. Florida Tech Panthers on the board. They return to the national tournament despite coming up just short in the Sunshine State Tournament. But a great season for Tech and their fans are ready for the drama that comes with NCAA tournament play. Two years ago, of course, the Panthers won the region and ultimately lost in the quarterfinals. But all four of those games went to penalties. Prior to losing to Embry-Riddle, Florida Tech was unbeaten over 11 straight matches. Rollins, the Tars are dancing in the tournament with an at-large from the Sunshine State. The last team in on this, uh, on this part of the bracket. Tars dropped two of their last three games, but their total body of work was enough to get them the last spot in this regional. Turning our attention now to the Southeast Regional, where the South Atlantic Conference champions this year hail from Lenore Rhine. Fourth title in league history for the Bears, who took the trophy home after outlasting Catawba in PKs. Bears swept the regular season title and tournament title for the third time in program history, something they hadn't done in over a decade. Well done by Ella Garner, who was named tournament MVP. They'll square off with Carson Newman, who gets an at-large bid for the first time since 2018. Eagles were impressive enough in conference play this year to earn the final spot in the South Regional. Of course, they lost to Lenore, Lenore Ryan twice this year, but maybe they got the right formula figured out on how to upset the Bears now in the NCAA postseason. Columbus State on the board next after taking the AQ from the Peach Belt Conference. Cougars won a ninth title in program history by knocking out North Georgia 3-1 in the league final. Flagler is on here. Andrea Fernandez broke the school's all-time goals and points record this season. That's been a big catalyst in getting them back into the national field. 51 career goals, 134 career points, and she's only played three years. Fernandez selected as the Peach Belt Conference Offensive Player of the Year for the third season consecutively. Flagler, of course, lost in the third round of the tournament last year and won another shot at a championship. Two seed belongs to Catawba, who pushed Lenore Ryan to the brink in a top 10 showdown in the SAC title. Ultimately fell a little short in PKs. The Indians were comfortably in the field. One of the best resumes in the nation. They're an offensive juggernaut this year. 3.2 goals per game over a 20 game season. Also top 10 nationally in assists, points, shots, and in corners. Four players have scored at least eight goals led by midfielder Sidney Jimmo, who's got 17 this season. UNC Pembroke, the three time defending champion in Conference Carolinas. So they get an AQ after a 2-1 win over Belmont Abbey. Ashley Harris scored 34 seconds into the title match. She was ultimately named the league tournament MVP for UNC Pembroke. And if you're going to play Pembroke, you better not lose track of Mercy Bell either, one of three players who leads the country with 19 goals. Two more here. North Georgia, you're in. Fourth year under Kaylee Ralton. Solid for the Nighthawks, who haven't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019, despite regularly being picked for the postseason. They'll play Wingate, second straight playoff appearance for the Bulldogs who get an at-large from the SAC. Wingate top 30 offensively and defensively this year. So they're gonna be a tough out when they travel to Catawba. South Central region now, it's a first round bye for top seed DBU. For the second year in a row, Dallas Baptist University won the Lone Star Conference. Third title in program history for the Patriots who beat St. Mary's four nothing to take the automatic berth this season. DBU is unbeaten on the year and they haven't allowed a goal over their last six games. Four seed belongs to UC Colorado Springs. They're in with an at-large. 
Mountain Lions were shocked in double overtime against Westminster in the conference tournament last week. But they won an NCAA tournament game last year and know what it takes to win in late November. Mountain Lions will open up against St. Mary's, who they drew 1-1 with back in September. Rattlers had a great season in the Lone Star before bowing out of the league tournament against DBU. Two seed belongs to Colorado School of Mines. They are loaded, ready for a tournament run. It's been a really good fall for the Ore Diggers athletics programs in general. They're hoping Reese McDermott can lead them to a national championship. She's the Armac Player of the Year, Natalie Rouse, the league's best defensive player, and Bella Campos, maybe the true story of the team, took home top freshman honors in the conference, thanks to setting the freshman scoring record at Mines with 17 goals. That is sixth nationally. Mines has a bye. How about the Mavericks from Colorado Mesa? Upset number four nationally ranked Colorado School of Mines to win the RMAC title on Sunday. Mesa has had a great year. They're the last one standing in the league, so they get the automatic bid. They've been tested, including a rough little stretch toward the end of October. The Mavericks seem to have found their way once more, and they could be a really tough out. The tournament title marks the second in program history and first for the Mavericks since 1998. Last team in the field in this region, Texas Women's University. The Pioneers started the season with 16 points through six games. Then they lost to Midwestern State. Then they went unbeaten over their next nine before they dropped the last two. A little streaky. Time to reset, start fresh. See what they can do in the tournament against Colorado Mesa. And finally, to the West region where it's not a great surprise here given the way the weekend unfolded. The number one seed is Point Loma, back on top of the Pac West Conference with a 5-1 win, I should say a 5-2-1 win at Fresno Pacific Saturday. PLNU clinched a fourth league title in five years. Sea Lions have been dynamite the last few weeks, winning their last six games consecutively by an aggregate score of 25-3. Sea Lions have at least reach the second round of the West Regional in each of the past four tournaments. Concordia University Irvine returns to the field, CUI and at large after a run to the regional final last year. They lost the opener this season to Cal State LA and then converted nine straight shutout wins. It'll be a tough out for a team they haven't seen since 2017. Cal State San Marcos who is still celebrating its first ever CCAA Tournament Championship. They beat Cal Poly Pomona 1-0 this past weekend, marking the Cougars' 13th shutout of the season. Of course, San Marcos improved its unbeaten streak to 14 games. That's a new program record. Sophomore Natalie Paulson, the CCAA Player and Defender of the Year. First time a Cougar has ever won either award, let alone both of them. The team at a program record seven earn all-conference honorees. Cougars probably stole a bit from somebody. They were not regionally ranked last week. They've got the auto bid into the NCAA tournament. Two seed is Seattle Pacific. They'll host this opening weekend after their bye. Falcons had an amazing run two years ago when they won the regional. See if they can tap back into some of that magic this year. Jacqueline Blakely leads the team with eight goals. Only two teams left to tell you about. First one is the three seed. It's Cal State LA for the second year in a row and the third time in the past four seasons. A great year for Cal State LA back in the tournament. Golden Eagles, a program record 15 match unbeaten streak, which was snapped in the conference semifinal loss to San Marcos. They have only allowed nine goals all season and have shut out an opponent 11 times. They're gonna be a tough customer for a team that knows they're in because it's an automatic bid. But let's build it up anyway, shall we? Another big upset this weekend in the Pacific Northwest. The defending national champions were stunned by Simon Frazier. Before this week, Simon Frazier had never even won a game at the GNAC Women's Soccer Tournament. But this week, they won them all. Pretty wild script, really. The Red Leafs came into the tournament final having not defeated Western Washington since September 17, 2005. In interim head coach Carlo Basso's first season at the helm, this result also gives the Red Leafs their fourth team in GNAC history to win a conference tournament since its inception in 2012. They're the first team to win the tournament that's not Seattle Pacific or Western Washington since 2018. 
there they are, all 56 teams that'll have a chance to compete for a national title. We are guaranteed to have a new national champion in 2023. We'd love to see you in person during the tournament. Certainly hope you'll support your favorite teams. But remember, no matter if you can get to the games or not, for all the latest tournament news and information, keep your eyes right here on NCA.com, especially for the home institutions if you're looking for ticketing info. I'm Brendan Gulick. Good night from Indianapolis, and the best of luck to everyone competing the next few weeks. Look forward to seeing you in Charlotte on December 7th. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of freaking out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com tickets. Class dismissed.